Hello guys, it's Vivs here from Slide Nerd. In this video, I'm gonna continue the Hello World app where I'm gonna build the splash screen and the launcher icon in this video. So before we start, there are two things I would like to point out. First, we plan to add all practical how to build app series and other things on Udemy. The link is right below in the description of this video. Second, if you go to our channel Slide Nerd and if you go to playlist, this video is gonna be found inside the iOS Swift Tutorial for Beginners playlist. There's also one more called Swift Tutorial for Beginners by Anki that's gonna cover only Swift videos. All right, let's get started. First, let's try to understand the units of measuring things on our iPhone. For example, we go to the document outline on the extreme left and we are going to select the label. Once we do that, we go to the extreme right here and we have five, six tabs here at the top. Out of that, we select the one which says show the size inspector in this if you remember x is 160 y is 289 width is 280 31 now these values they are not in pixels all of them are in points so that naturally brings a question to you what is a point and why do i need that let's take a look at what a point is you see on the oldest devices a point is a pixel now this square you see here is one pixel and one point equals one pixel on the oldest ones on more recent devices you have one point as four pixels Whereas starting with the iPhone 6 Plus and any other device that follows it, one point is 9 pixels. A similar convention exists for the iPad as well. At any point, if you're uncertain how many points or how many pixels fit inside a point for a given iPhone or iPad, always be sure to Google it out because there are several devices out there. Now the next thing I would like to point out is how a screen would actually look. So this is the one X screen that we are talking about where there are less number of pixels per inch or so. For the 2x, more pixels can fit within the same area and for a 3x, much more pixels can fit within the same area which is why the 1x, 2x, 3x system exists and to make the image the same size, you can understand that you need to cover more pixels on the recent devices, right? On 2x, you need to make your image twice as large. On 3x, you need to make your image thrice as large as what you make on 1x so that the same image looks to be of the same size when the user sees it on different devices. To minimize confusion, let's try to understand the devices in terms of both pixel size and point size. The iPhone 4s, 5 and 6 fall under the category where one point is 2 pixels. So whatever pixels you see at the bottom, you simply divide that by 2 and you get the number of points that the screen has. The iPhone 6 Plus on the other hand and all other devices that come after it fall, falls under the 3x category where you take 1242 by 2208 and you divide that by 3 to get your number of points on the screen. So this makes everything clear I hope. If you go and take a look at the images that we need, this is what you are going to create. For the lowest iPhone, you need an image which is say 63 by 63. For all those iPhones where one point is 2 pixels, you will need an image double its size so that it can fit in the same area. For the iPhone 6 Plus and later devices, you will need an image which is triple the size to fit in the same area. So now that you understand this concept, let's take a look at how we can make our launcher icon. So our app is running right now. I'm going to choose the iOS emulator and in the hardware section, at the top, I will select the home option. This is simply going to navigate my app outside to the home screen. And you notice our Hello World app has this default icon given here. But what if we want one of these kind of good bright colored icons? We have to make our own icon in that case, which is called the launcher icon. Now making the launcher icon is not that hard if you're an expert at Photoshop. But what is more tricky is the different sizes that you need. For example, here in the home screen, you need a particular size. But if you're going to spotlight search your app, then the icon that shows up here for the same app that you're making is going to need a different size. And that is going to be different for the iPhone and the iPad. At the same time, when your app comes under settings like this, you're going to need an icon of another size over here. Again, that is going to change depending on whether it's the iPhone or the iPad. It even changes with iOS versions in some case. For example, 7 has some issues with the icon, 6 has something else. So there's a lot of icon sizes that we need to consider for making this. Now, luckily, you don't have to ransack your brains in deciding what size you should use. There are tools available for making that happen. Let's go back to our Xcode and let me show you where we add our icon. To actually add our icon, we go in the left here and we pick this images.xc assets file for over here. So inside this folder, we have the app icon and you see that there are some sizes that are specified here. It says make a 29 point icon, 2x, the iPhone, 3x, 
the iPhone Spotlight 2X, 3X, the iPhone app 2X, 3X and so on. So if you go here and if you select the other option that is to right click here and say new app icon and let's say you call this one, this is the list of icons that you're going to need. Now different versions of iOS may have different requirements for the icon sizes and therefore the first step is to go to Google and simply say iOS app launcher icon. Once you do that, you will get a lot of results. The one you're interested in would be from developer.apple.com. Let's open that link in the new tab and take a look at what it says. If you notice here on the left side, it says icon and image design and there's a lot of things covered here. There's the icon image sizes needed for everything, the app launcher icon in specific, the launcher launch images and there are other type of icons like tab bar icons and button bar icons and stuff. So let's go back and take a look at some of these sizes. Now there's a lot of information here about what icon sizes you should use for each situation. For example, your app store needs a 1024 by 1024 icon regardless of which icon you're designing out there. And there are other sizes out there, you can surely read them out. And if you take a look at the next section which is app icon. Here they talk about how you should design your icon. Remember that in Photoshop you don't really have to make a rounded rectangle image. You can just make a square by square image and a mask is going to be applied that will round your icon appropriately. And if you take a look further down, they also talk about the setting screen, what your icon should be there and the sizes for that as well. There are several ways you can make these icons. You can go to Photoshop and you can resize each item individually or you can take a template like this one which makes different launch screen images there's also a template here for android and ios app icons generator and i'll have the links to both these templates right below in the description but i'm going to use a website here that lets me do that this website the link is again in the description of this video i'm going to hit choose file here select the file which is 33949 blah 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 dot png now this file is a 640 pixel by 680 pixel transparent png image which has the slide nerd logo on it i'm going to just click open there and i'm going to click generate here once i do that it's going to generate the icons and it's going to give me a link to download the icons now in my case i have already downloaded the icons and they are right here in my finder all i need to do is put right icons inside the right places in xcode in my case I only enabled iPhone in the previous videos when I started working on this app and therefore I'm going to remove this app icon one and I'm going to strip to the de default app icon. So let's try to see how we can put the right images in this. The first one need, it needs a 29 point for a 2x and a 3x. Let's try to find out where the 29 point is. It's inside the finder here. Now just to show you where and how I'm adding images, all my images are present inside a single folder. Now this folder can be placed anywhere on your computer. All I have to do is take the right icon, say the 63x here, and I have to just drag it and when I see this guideline over there, drop it over there and that's how you need to add each icon inside Xcode. Now all our launcher icons are complete. Let's try to run the app and see if we get the intended effect. So now my app is running once again. If I go to the top and if I go here to hardware and if I go to the home button from there, without using the shortcut, I will notice that the slide nerd app icon is now live. So that's how you make an app icon. Let's get to the next part that would be our splash screen. The splash screen is right here, which would be our launch screen dot xib. Now this is just like your storyboard file. You can just drag and drop items here and you can customize what goes on and what doesn't. For example, we have this hello world written here right now. We can just zoom in and we can double click on it and edit the text. So say my first app and this would be a label right we can customize the properties of the label the same way by selecting the label first here and going on the right hand side now make sure that you're in the four tab which would be the attributes inspector in my case select the attributes inspector and again all the same options pop up for example the text size here is 36 we can change that to something else instead of the text being bold we can make it thin and we can change the font to something else if you want the size probably to something else, hit done here, change the color to something else and so on. Now let's go down and remove this copyright statement which is basically another UI label. You can see what items are being placed on your launch screen by going down here and opening the document outline. When you do that, you notice that it has this copyright label and this first app label. So let's remove the copyright label by selecting it and pressing delete on your keyboard and bam, it's gone. Now launch images or splash screen images have their own rules again. There are two ways you can make that. Either you can jump to Xcode and you can have your launch screen.xib which can act as your launch screen where you can add other widgets like labels, buttons or whatever you want. 
The other approach, which is the older approach before iOS 8, is to add a static image in the first place that is in the launch screen. Be sure to read this guide in detail about what you need to use the launch images for and what are the different ways you can add a launch image and at the bottom here they are talking about the settings launch image that they have by default for ios and for the weather launch image out here and then they have said if you're using a static image then these are the sizes you need to consider for the different devices now let me show you how to add launch images statically first now this will work on all versions of ios even before ios 8 but in ios 8 and later like they mentioned here in this point you can use a storyboard file so let's go back to xcode and if you go to images.xc assets here on the left at the top all you have to do is go in and say new and you say new launch image when you do that you're gonna see a huge list of options that are available to you and it's pretty confusing if you're a beginner for the first time looking at this since I made this app for the iPhone at the beginning of this video in part one I'm going to consider doing only the iPhone images out there that would mean the top ones which sees iPhone in the portrait mode for iOS 8 and in the landscape mode for iOS 8 other than that there is gonna be iPhone in the portrait for five and six ios versions out there and other than that the other images which you see would be the ipad at the top in the middle and the ipad at the bottom now once again i would prefer using an online website that does that kind of work here so in my case here it is app iconsizes.com which does that if you go and take a look they say select your image so i'm going to select my file here which is going to be a huge image called splash.jpg now this is a 1 mb image with a resolution of 3000 into 4000 something i'm going to select that image notice that it's also a jpg file i'm supposed to put pngs out there i'm going to click open here and once i do that it's going to ask me which type of icons or formats i want to generate for i want to have ios default launch screen so i'm going to select that option here and click go at the bottom when i do that it's going to generate some images and bam take a look at that there's my splash screen image for every type of ios device out there now i need to just download these images and put them in the right folders inside this area in xcode just the way i did for the app icons however this one this website right now at the time of recording this video does not support making the splash screens for ios 8 if you know a better site that does it, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Adding so many images is not such a great idea because it's going to increase the size of your app. If you take a look at the human interface guidelines here, there's a nice sentence that says if you want to support earlier versions of iOS, that is before 8, then you can do both. That is add the launch image and your launch file. But in my case, I just want to run this on iOS 8 and therefore I don't care about the launch images. So going back to Xcode, I'm just going to get rid of it from my images.xc assets folder here on the left hand side. Rather, I'm going just going to jump into my launch screen.zip and here I'm going to delete my label first. I need to add an image. So I need to go to the bottom right here to my object library and inside the object library I will simply type image once I do that I will get something called an image view the image view as they say is a widget that lets you add a single image or display an animation amongst a series of images in our case we are interested in just a single image so just drag and drop it to take the full screen space out there now remember just because it looks big here doesn't mean it's going to take up the full screen space remember auto layout constraints from the previous video we need to explicitly specify using auto layout that the image view should stick on the left the top the right and the bottom let's see how we can do that notice that we have a document outline which can be enabled inside the splash screen as well if you take a look at this document outline it has the same structure there is this view here that represents our screen and then there is the image view which is inside and occupying the full available space we need to specify that the image view should stick on the left right top bottom with zero zero points in all direction that is an auto layout constraint that we want to add to do so we are going to just go on the right hand side at the bottom here there is an option called pin we are going to click that option and we are going to see that it should be zero 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 from whoever the nearest neighbor is and we are going to click add for constraints when we do that you will notice that the image view is now stuck with zero points to the view zero to top zero right zero bottom and so on in other words it takes the full screen space now all we need to do is specify a background image for this image view the way you do that is to use 
this property on the right hand side called an image if you click open you notice that there is nothing here that's because we need to first add the image to our assets folder if you remember on the left hand side we have the image.xc assets here so what i'm going to do is take a standard image from my finder and just gonna drag and drop it in my case this is going to be this image called blue splash of jpg now jpg is a bad idea you should convert it to png before you add it but right now i don't have any appropriate file with me so i'm just going to take and drag and drop it on the left side here as soon as i do that you notice that it adds this inside 1x but i want that image to be actually 3x because that image is the size of iphone 6 plus once done i simply go back to the launch screen.zip this time i go all the way on the right to the image property and when i take the drop down i notice the blue splash image automatically i'm going to select that and take a look at this this would be our image now when we run this we will find out if it's displaying properly or not let's try that to display this whole splash screen effect i'm doing, going to select a different device which would be iphone 6 and click run here at the top it says stop hello world yeah stop it and rerun it this time the ios simulator is going to jump from 5s to 6 and you will notice the simulator starting now remember if you see our image just .xc assets folder we only have the 3x image for our splash screen that means for a 2x and a 1x device that is going to simply scale down and bam take a look at that there's our splash screen starting for the first time and then our screen launches now you can add other controls to the splash screen like a label and that would still work perfectly fine finalize things i have dragged and dropped a label here which would be called my first app if you go on the right hand side you will notice that i have the color as white for that label the text size is 36 which is thin and i can also add a shadow here by simply going down a bit and there is this field here called shadow i'm going to select the black color along the x-axis the shadow should be at zero but on the y it should be two if you go back this is what you see the shadow appearing a bit slightly now let's save this and try to run our app and savor the design just run it out there click stop and the iphone 6 emulator is going to launch the splash screen and bam there's that now the problem you notice once again was the auto layout constraint i need to center it the same way i did in my previous video using the same technique from my previous video i have added the auto layout constraint now i can just click run click stop and my ios emulator this time is going to have a fully centered splash screen just like the one you saw there so hopefully that helps with your hello world as well you're still watching this give yourself a big pat on the back because you have made your first app completely comprehensive we are also on udemy be sure to check us out there and our social networks on twitter and facebook which you can google out easily and all the code for this video and any other video is going to be on slide note github in the meantime it's time to continue ios in the next video if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching we'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day